just kind of maintain and uh, keep the uh, the number of players in a, a healthy state. I um, I, I think uh, where where they're going because uh, let's say they're going to compete with someone like uh, Axie Infinity. Um, Axie is growing right now and they're um, adding uh, more and the, the Ronin chain will eventually add games to it. It's a, right now it's only a one, but I, I would imagine over the next three years they're they're projected to add uh, five to six games to their network. So. Wow. Okay. Well, I, I know you're bullish on Ronin, and I uh, I've done very little research on it. But uh, what if we if we can get away? Because you're probably the only person that I talk to regularly who is uh, even just remotely aware of what's going on. Axie, what is yeah. Axie doing that is effective right now um, for for growing people in this kind of like weird bear market, bear you know bull rally, whatever you want to call it, bear market rally. I think one of the core principle that Axie has always maintained, uh, it's a scholarship uh, type uh, model. And I, I think um, it's something that I believe um, we're going to groups like YGG and Nifty, they uh, kind of uh, borrow from uh, from that or extend the, uh, mm -hmm. the scholarship <clears throat> uh, pro uh, program, so to speak. And we, we can have a different perspective on, uh, you know, what what percentage to take and things like that. I think the uniqueness that Splinterlands kind of uh, thrown into the um, mix is uh, the uh, the bots uh, piece. Uh, Splinterlands uh, embraces bots as long as it meets uh, certain fair play components and things things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so the Splinterlands has has taken the other extreme where they're supporting uh, themselves, their ecosystem through bots versus um, games like uh, Axie Infinity have, um, and uh, others like League of Kingdoms, and they supported their um, their growth through um, the scholarship program. Yeah, well, I, I mean that's that's kind of a good good move then for Splinterlands to be partnering up with Nifty. Yeah, in in that way, right? Because we we want more humans. We don't just want more players. We want more humans, right? That are going to bring more money to the ecosystem. That will be uh, a contributing yeah. member. I mean, I I don't necessarily look at it as like um, I I think it's good to just have more uh, more players, and those are spend. Um, those are not mm -hmm. going to be extracting from the economy. I I know people will, uh, you know, like one of the downsides of uh, scholarships is if they're from either a uh, underdeveloped or unbanked or uh, underbanked. Um, uh, country, one of those countries, they'll extract uh, on a weekly basis uh, yeah. out of uh, they'll take they'll take out of the ecosystem. I think it's just a matter of coming up with that balance. So um, nifty scholars, uh, players uh, will extract on a weekly basis. It, it'll be very similar to the bot experience. I think that's where some people may not realize it. It'll mm. be very similar in terms of the extraction, I think. Um, and I think also the direction that uh, Splinterlands is going with the uh, Soulbound uh, model, um, it's it's just something that people think about, but it's not a something that's proven, and it's something that is kind of inching towards the uh, traditional Web two model, and uh, that this comes down to the notion of like what constitutes a game to be sustainable, fun, and enjoyable. You know th those types mm -hmm. of um, uh, consideration uh, aspect of the games.